Alright, in this video we're going to talk about integration of inverse trig functions. So for example, suppose that you had to do the integral of sine inverse of x dx. We don't know how to do that offhand, but it turns out we can use integration by parts. Just to quickly review, the integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. Now, as we said, the problem is we don't know how to integrate inverse trig functions, but we do know their derivatives. So we can use integration by parts, and we take u to be the inverse trig function, because in integration by parts, we take the derivative of u. So let's do an example. Integral of tangent inverse of x dx. We know that d dx of tangent inverse of x is 1 divided by 1 plus x squared. So if we take u to be tangent inverse of x, that means du will be dx divided by 1 plus x squared. With that choice, we have to take dv to be dx, and so v would be integral of dx, which is just x. So putting that together, we took u to be tangent inverse of x, du is dx over 1 plus x squared, and v is x. So we get the integral of tangent inverse of x dx is x tangent inverse of x minus the integral of x dx over 1 plus x squared. Now this integral on the right is pretty easy to do using substitution. And since we're already using u and v, we'll call the new variable w. So we have w is 1 plus x squared. So dw would be 2x dx, which we almost have up there. So we're going to solve for x dx, which is in the integral, and we get 1 half dw. So the integral of x dx over 1 plus x squared equals one-half integral dw over w, which is one-half natural log of absolute value of w plus the constant of integration. And using our substitution, we have one-half natural log one plus x squared plus c. So we had t integral of tangent inverse of x dx equals x tangent inverse of x minus integral of x dx over 1 plus x squared. And using our result, we get x tangent inverse x minus 1 half natural log 1 plus x squared plus c. So now let's do another example, and this time we'll do a definite integral. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 sine inverse of x dx. And in this case, the procedure is exactly the same. But this time we're going to use the fact that d dx of the inverse sine function is 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. And that's as long as we're in minus 1 to 1, which we are, 0 to 1. So we take u equals sine inverse x. So du is dx divided by square root 1 minus x squared. So dv is dx v is integral dx, which is just x. We're doing the same thing we did with the integral of the tangent. So we get integral 0 to 1 sine inverse of x dx equals x sine inverse x from 0 to 1, that's the uv term, minus integral v du, which in this case is x dx over square root 1 minus x squared. Now to do this last integral, we're going to use substitution again, and we'll use the variable w as we did in the first example. We'll take w equals 1 minus x squared. So dw is minus 2x dx. So the integral from 0 to 1 of x dx over square root 1 minus x squared equals minus 1 half integral w to the minus 1 half dw. And that's minus 1 half w to the minus 1 half plus 1 divided by minus 1 half plus 1 is minus the square root of w 
equals minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. Putting everything together, you get the integral from 0 to 1, sine inverse of x dx equals x, sine inverse x, integrals from 0 to 1, minus the integral from 0 to 1 of x dx over square root 1 minus x squared, equals x sine inverse x from 0 to 1, plus square root 1 minus x squared 0 to 1 is sine inverse 1 minus 1. And uh, the change of sign at the end there came because we picked up the minus sign when we evaluated that integral. So that's how you do integration of inverse trig functions. You take the inverse trig function to be u because we know the derivative and proceed from there. So for more help with calculus, you might be interested in our book, Calculus Without Limits. That's available at calculuswithoutlimits.com.